Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Heat 5 Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day today. We have racing in the Truck Series, Xfinity Series, as well as the Cup Series. But first we have the very first breaking silly season news all season long. And that is that Chip Ganassi and Tyler Reddick have decided to part ways at the end of the season. Quote, we're happy for Tyler and wish him nothing but the best in the future, said Chip Ganassi. Reddick is rumored to replace uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. at the end of the season at Roush LeBron Racing next season but I can confirm that was the rumor at the time of making this quote-unquote article I can confirm now Tyler Reddick will be driving for Roush LeBron racing next season in potentially the number six car in place of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. We'll have to wait and see what's going on there so that guarantees a lineup of Christopher Bell as well as Tyler Reddick next season for that Roush LeBron racing team. We first of all had the Truck Series race to deal with here at Gateway for the first race of the playoffs where we had community member Seth Upol in the truck for us here today and he was already up into second place going for that front spot here now as it came through out of turns to right behind that 38 of Chandler Smith. It's been a very strong season for us here in the Truck Series with this going racing team. Multiple wins and we were in the mix for the championship at the regular season right down to the wire into that last race of the regular season here in the Truck Series and Seth would take the lead on this opening lap and that was it he would not look back it was a dominant performance here in gateway we cut straight through to the final lap of this race and zero pressure from behind he had opened up a very very large gap to the competition through turn three out of turns four for the final time here and it was going to be the first race of the playoffs to go and racing team goes to victory lane and locks herself already into round at number two so uh seth you picks up the victory lane there as you see the rest of the finishing order so a great way to start off this episode and hopefully sets the tone for the Xfinity Series race as well as the Cup Series race where we have just two races left in the regular season on the Cup Series side but on the Xfinity side we still have like four to go so plenty of time left here in the Xfinity Series regular season Paul Menard behind the wheel of our number 77 going racing Menard's Chevrolet Camaro down into turns one he goes three wide through turns one and two with the number nine of uh, Sheldon Creed and the 10 of Quinn Half and do keep in mind Paul is in the fight for the regular season championship here with a handful of races left in that regular season for the Xfinity Series but he's got to beat drivers like Kimi Raikkonen if he wants to win the regular season championship and as of right now at the beginning of this race it was actually Kimi Raikkonen up front he has had a great transition from Formula 1 to NASCAR but a little bit later in this race Paul actually had a bit of a run-in with Roman Grosjean as he came through out of turns for a run-in as well with Clements and the 20 of Kevin Magnuson. He was all over the place. Thank goodness. I don't know how, but he saved it and he kept on going in the right direction, but it wasn't very good after that point. The key was just really hanging on. He did get back in front of the 51 of Clements, but we are now on the final lap and Kimi Raikkonen had come around to win the race here from Dover with a large margin over second place and Paul comes through to cross the line there for an eighth place finish. So at least it was still a top 10. I was happy with that, but a lot of chaos there kind of mixed up the finishing order there up towards the top five and even top 10 as well now but nonetheless I can't complain about still a top 10 finish for Paul even on a rough day so that's just showing how good our Xfinity team has been with going racing this season going racing in the cup series been a completely different scenario here it's not been pretty now as we jump through into qualifying here at New Hampshire Dr. Pepper paint scheme on the car today as we went down into turns one the goal was a 29-4-8-0 I didn't know if I was going to be able to beat that it was going to be close we usually qualify pretty good though here and we came through to cross the line and actually do beat it with a 28-9-5-5 so I beat it by a good four tenths of a second and qualify fourth place for the Foxwoods Resort and Casino. 301 here from New Hampshire Motor Speedway up on pole shocker there Chase Elliott who's qualified like top five every single race this season I think just about and Sam Mayer, Christian Eckes, myself and Lewis Hamilton round out the top five there as you look through the rest of the order Alex Bowman down there in P25 Daniel Suarez for going racing all the way down in that 33rd position and at the back of the field we got the number 40 of Timmy Hill all right, boys, I mean, we got, what, two races left in the regular season. Now it's all focused on trying to beat that nine car. So uh, it's going to be tough. We know he's fast, but I don't see why we can't do it. 
There you hear myself on the radio to the team now as we're fighting against Chase Elliott as well as Eric Jones for the regular season championship. Myself versus a former uh, Gordon Hendrick Motorsports teammate and of course the McLaren duo right there. Now as you see Ryan Blaney starting at the back after failing pre-race inspection. Gregson crashed during qualifying. He is starting at the back as well and that Chip Ganassi one car now uh, as we get ready to take the green flag. Still a bit of an open gap with the uh, points battle right now on the bubble to make the playoffs between Kyle Busch and Alex Bowman. So I'm not going to show it this episode. But next episode for sure, we will have it up now as the green flag is out. And we are underway here from New Hampshire Motor Speedway now as two races remain in the regular season. Finally, we got some silly season news. I didn't plan on having any silly season news this season because, well, we originally thought this was the final season of the career mode. But, well, we were wrong, obviously, with now the NASCAR 21 ignition release date being so late in the year of October 28th. So uh, we do have, like I said last episode, one more season is confirmed of this NASCAR Heat 5 career mode and we're going to try and make it the best season possible hopefully now as we had the first domino fall of Tyler Reddick leaving Chip Ganassi Racing he's going to be replacing Ricky Stenhouse Jr. at Roush LeBron Racing so it's going to be interesting to see what they can do that Roush LeBron team has been really good with Christopher Bell behind the wheel have they been winning races no but Christopher Bell has been consistent enough to be comfortably inside the playoffs unless we have a new winner today that is so Bell right now looking pretty good uh, Stenhouse, though, he's been way off, so I'm not surprised one bit to see him getting sacked, pretty much, from that team at Roush LeBron. So now as we came through it, it turns for though, a little bit of pressure there from the 19 of Harrison Burton. Now it's kind of dealing with a little bit of tightness in the car on the exit, specifically of these corners, and uh, through the center at times as well, but I remember back to just past races here, we know the car is going to free up on the long run. So as, speaking of freeing up, right there, the car tries to go completely around on me, so we got cleared by the 19 of Burton, but we would fight back here, side by side with 11 laps to go in stage 1. Not a lot of time here in stage 1, only 17 laps Laps, which is uh, about seven or eight laps shorter, I believe, than stage two is because I think we have 25 laps or something like that Careful. in stage two. Still side by side with the JGR driver of Burton, but the caution comes out for the first time here today, and everybody will be staying up because we only ran uh, a few laps really. So everyone's going to be staying up and getting ready to go back green here now, uh, as you can see the rest of that order right now. Gutierrez at the bottom, and I can confirm it was Max Gutierrez bringing out the caution, and he would be our first DNF on the day here from New Hampshire. Chase Elliott, Christian Eckes on your front row. Eckes and Elliott both have three wins apiece coming into today's episode as we are back underway. We have four wins. There's, uh, what, three drivers right now with four wins on the season and two of those are myself as well as my Gordon Hendrick teammate of Kyle Larson. Bubba Wallace up there as well as he's been very, very strong lately in this career mode. Now, he started the season off rough. He was inside the playoffs comfortably, but he wasn't winning races and then he just popped off here in the late part of the season. And we definitely know that Bubba Wallace is going to be a threat for the championship if he at least can bring that performance into the playoffs. But, you know, Gordon Hendrick Motorsports has fallen off quite a bit since those regulation changes. I wouldn't be surprised if we come back uh, with a just absolute storm in that playoffs and bring back what we had at the beginning of the season where we won the first eight of ten races i believe like that uh, to start the season so that's kind of the goal if we can go to the playoffs for ten races maybe we can win eighty percent of those as a team that would be really nice now as we actually get under attack now from the twenty three of bubba wallace and that uh, doordash toyota camry right there now as he's got a better run through the center and exit of the corner there and he would almost get past me but actually i would be able to fight back on the outside and remain alongside at least with him and we came through to lap fourteen and we were still side by side elliot he was just running away with the victory not a whole lot of pressure on him here as we get clear just about from Bubba on the exit of turns four. But once again, battling back here on the outside with three to go in this first and opening stage. Now he's got the 66 of Sam Mayer kind of holding up the 83 of Christian Eckes, allowing uh, Mayer's teammate of Alia to get just kind of checked out here and try to win this first stage now as he's trying to pick up yet another playoff point on the season. Elliott, another example of a driver that had kind of a slow start to the season, but now has three wins coming into New Hampshire. He's really picked it up lately as well as he's been consistent all season long, and so has the whole McLaren team. The regulation changes really didn't seem to affect them, but Sam Mayer and Eric Jones still looking for their first wins on the season, surprisingly. If they both go this whole season without winning a race, I would be in shock because they have been so fast, so consistent, and the two best drivers 
in points right now without a race of victory as we were on this final lap here of stage one back up into fourth place just like where we started as Elliot leads the way through three and four for the final time here dominant performance in stage one for him Ekus did get clear of Mayer and started closing in a little bit on the nine of Elliot so we can tell that 83 Red Bull car has some speed here today now as we come through to cross the line in fourth place in this first and opening stage so definitely happy with what this car had at this point, but I was a little bit concerned there. Kind of started freeing up at the end of stage one, but I really didn't know if it was worth adjusting on. And stage two is definitely going to be our indicator on how this car is going to handle on the long run. So I decided to at least wait till we get to experiment in stage two before we decide what to actually do with this Dr. Pepper Chevrolet Camaro here for Gordon Hendrick Motorsports. But everybody comes into the pit lane here for two cans of fuel, four fresh tires. Ricky Stenos Jr. currently the last driver running now as we do gain one spot. They're overtaking Sam Mayer at four McLarens in now up into third place we go right behind that number nine of Chase Elliott as a green flag is underway. And for the start of stage two from New Hampshire, it is time to get amped. There you have the amp segment here from New Hampshire Motor Speedway. 25 laps here in this second middle stage. And we clearly have a car that's capable of competing now with that 83 of Eka set 9 of Chase Elliott. Bubba Wallace, we have brought him into the party as well now as he's trying to mix it up here now as he is strong everywhere. Road courses, he's won at road courses. We went into Canada last episode at my home track and we saw Bubba blow an engine while leading the race. Could that be a momentum shift? I don't know because clearly you can see that DoorDash Toyota Camry is running just as strong as before here today in New Hampshire but uh, nonetheless a big heartbreak moment uh, there for Bubba in that last episode in Canada now as that win was all his if it stayed green and if his engine of course didn't expire so now we're side by side with the 83 of Christian Eckes down into turns three and this is my preferred line I love making this second line work the AI they love to run right on that bottom I can't make that bottom work to my liking so I always jump up to the second lane and do that right there we pass cars we got around the 83 and move up to second a dive bomb up the inside of the nine Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet Camaro there but it's not going to be enough now as Elliot will fight back and I actually cut down onto the apron a little bit just trying to get the best corner possible didn't quite work so now on the lap seven now to the outside of the nine of Elliot and I was trying my best to just pinch him down just like this right here if you can pinch that AI car down you're in really good shape on the exit of the corner because of course it, it limits them from opening up the wheel on the exit and that prevents momentum for them and gives it really to you now as Christian Eckes though getting aggressive forces it three wide catches us a little bit off guard. He goes to the lead as we exit turn throw. We're still side by side here with Chase Elliott now as we have been competitive rivals all season long. We're not actually in-game rivals like we are with Joey Logano for Penske Racing, but definitely like a competitive rival of ours. If we have seen that nine cars back bumper, we've seen his front bumper in our mirror a lot, we've seen the side of his car all season long. I definitely could remember that paint scheme if I closed my eyes and just hand draw it without even looking, I think. Now, as we were side by side with Ekeso continuing to make the outside line work down into turn three, and now can we clear that 83 Red Bull driver as we come through out of turns four? We tried to pinch him down the best we can. We have the momentum. We get clear for the lead finally here on lap 10 of 25 in stage 2 and then we came through to lap 16 and this was about and the we hit the transition point with this car you're going to start seeing myself sliding around a little bit on the exit of these corners out of turns 2 it wasn't that bad and you can see I held a bit of a stable gap during those six laps uh, between taking the lead and now against El Elliot as well as Christian Eckes but right here out of turns 4 you're starting to see this car slipping around I'm hanging on out of nowhere and then the concerns building because obviously 
especially these guys behind me, are not having anything like that happen to their cars. Their cars are driving way better than mine all of a sudden. So now, with about eight laps to go in stage two, we are definitely at risk of losing the stage because here comes Christian Eckes as I'm sliding out of the corner. He's halfway up my left side, down the back straightaway in turns three, and he is probably going to take the lead. And now it's going to get a little bit more hectic here as Chase Elliott does what Eckes did to us earlier and make it three wide. I am way up the track, hanging on to the car. Elliott and Eckes go through side by side, and we were just fading after this point. Now, Elliott got clear for Eckes for the time being, and then I was now under attack on lap 20 from Harrison Burton there for Joe Gibbs Racing, who's been the face of Joe Gibbs Racing this season now. No one's really been able to put the numbers up that he has. As you've seen, his uh, teammate like Ty Gibbs struggle, Kyle Busch struggle, Rajad Carruth as well struggle, but Gibbs has been hands down the worst driver for that team this season, and it'll be interesting to see if he can pick it up next season as a caution does come out, and we are going to get awarded fourth place again here in stage two. I was really happy to see that caution because I think Sam Mayer as well as Bubba Wallace were going to be able to pass us for sure because we were just so far off the pace. So now I decide, okay, we need to make some adjustments to this car. So I put the wedge up by a couple clicks there from 50.0 to 50.2, and then I lowered the right side tire pressures from about, what, 28 to 27. So uh, not huge changes because I didn't think we need drastic changes to this car to be competitive now as we get ready to go green for the start of stage three where we gain one spot again and move up into p3 so deja vu a little bit here at the end of stage one we were fourth we started stage two and third while at the end of stage two we're fourth and we start stage three back in p3 as we are underway christian eckes chase elliott your top two drivers all day long we know on the short to kind of middle part of the run we have a car that's capable of competing with these guys and beating them but on that long run we're in trouble and that's why we had to make those adjustments to the car because we're hoping that we can get this car to be a little bit more competitive on that long run and not just slip and slide around all the time and hopefully that will keep us in the battle here for the win. I completely overdrove turn three right there, and now we have to lift out of turns four, and I could really feel that the car was a lot tighter, but the problem was it felt a little bit too tight, so the concerns immediately go right back up through the roof because you saw me in stage two on how hard of a time I had getting past both Chase Elliott and Eckes, and by the time we finally completed those passes, we were already closing in on the transition point of the car, and then we started to fade. So now that the car is tighter, it makes it harder for my to be able to pinch these guys down because I'm pushing up through the whole corner so it was a bit of a challenge right now we did a nice job right there pinching the nine car down but I know that we have to complete these passes as quick as possible because even if our car drives better on the long run these guys are still going to be better than myself so you see how hard I'm driving it into turn three side by side with that because unfortunately a little bit too much there into turn three and now once again we're side by side with the nine of Ellie and we continue side by side with him now into lap 52 and we're going to do three wide again for the lead for like the third time today but I just didn't have a car that that was turning good enough at this point to be able to even keep it kind of uh, glued to the line that I was in. So they're side by side here between Elliott and Eckes into turns one now with just 23 laps to go. The fuel situation, very, very close. By my calculations at this point, we were about two laps short, but we were saving a little bit of fuel each lap just by how we were naturally driving the track. But now with 21 laps to go, Elliott out in front over Eckes myself to the outside again of Eckes trying to make another charge to get to the front. At this point, though, I knew we were already closing in on that transition point of this car, so the concerns were just continuously building now because I realized that those adjustments we made going into Stage 3 were really the wrong way to go simply because I don't have a car good enough to be able to pass these guys on the short to middle run of this final stage. Now side by side, even at the line with Chase Elliott, but is it going to be enough of 20 to go down into turns? One, I go a little bit too high into the corner, and that's going to give the advantage to that Napa Auto Parts car now as we pinch him down the best we can out of turn. Too, but you can see right there the car got sideways and that was starting to get into that transition point already and I knew we were in trouble at this point now let's go down into turns three lap 57 three wide again for the lead with Elliott as well as Eckes that does not help me at all when you're on the far outside and now Eckes goes through to the lead we've had great racing here with Eckes Elliott and myself for the lead all race long and especially here in stage three as well but now on lap 58 the car was starting to fade away here now as I fall in behind that nine of Elliott and you can just see me slipping and sliding around and with 12 laps to go Elliot and Eckes they were side by side going for the lead and I could see some lap traffic that we were closing in on so I knew that was my last opportunity to maybe do something here and the field situation at this point with nine laps to go was very very close it was looking like we were maybe a lap or so short so I decided we're probably just going to stay out to the end of this race if it stays green here and just try to gamble and maybe make it to the finish and win the race that way but now on lap 69 lap traffic in full force there's Daniel Suarez 
for that going racing team right there on our inside of course not having a good day as usual he has won the season if you guys remember back to talladega but not in the top 30 in points so he will not make the playoffs but right on the back of that nine of elliot now as i'm trying to look to potentially make a three wide in the middle but i car my car was just slipping and sliding around and i couldn't quite do it now and ekis is driving away here in the closing laps coming to six laps to go here as we come through to cross the line the caution comes out and that is going to force a potential three or two lap dash in regulation this is going to be as this is going to force everybody into the pit lane i could stay out and that would just be like the dumbest thing ever so i actually do not decide to stay out we're going to come into the pit lane here and all we're doing though is half a can of field and no tires but i didn't want to be the guy on the front row i know the car is trash at this point and now i'm deciding you know what this is our opportunity to make a couple of more adjustments to this car and maybe if we get this car tuned up well enough with those adjustments we might have a chance here to potentially steal a race win Ekis wins the race off of the pit lane over Chase Elliott. Kozlowski gained a couple positions there. Haley Deegan gains two spots into the top 10. This will be a big day to keep her in the top 30 in points now as a green flag is out and we are underway here and it is three laps to go from New Hampshire and you saw me right there. I actually shifted up into fourth gear too early and that kept me from getting a really good run on the back of the 83 of Ekis right here and unfortunately you can just see right off the bat I just didn't have enough drive to the center of the corner compared to what the 9 of Elliott and the 83 of Ekis have so it's going to be a scrap between those two drivers here now is Bubba Wallace, Brad Kozlowski side by side as I sail it off into turns three and now the tire icon has come on. That's not going to be a concern as it's only two laps to go as we come through down this front straightaway to cross the line. Elliot, can he put enough pressure on the back of that 83 of Christian Eckes now as Kozlowski got clear of Bubba Wallace and moved up into that fourth position. Kozlowski in a must-win scenario if he wants to make it into the playoffs. You've seen him kind of show himself up at the front of the pack here in the last couple of episodes. Uh, just out of nowhere and here he is once again in the top five but it's not going to be enough here fourth place won't cut it at this point now as we approach the final lap here from New Hampshire when I was doing this live I had no idea I thought we were already on the final lap so I actually backed it down like right here for a second and then I realized oh no this is the start of the final lap now Elliot right on the back of Christian Eckes through turns one and two Keselowski has gotten to the back and be putting some pressure on us as we exit the corner and down this back straightaway a bit of a slide on the exit of the corner Elliot can he get to the inside of Christian Eckes into turns three. Yes, he can, and so can Kozlowski to the inside of myself, but Elliot is going to be side-by-side side with Christian Eckes out of turns four. We're going to be side-by-side side with Brad Kozlowski now to the line. It's going to be Eckes holding on barely over Elliot for the win, and Kozlowski actually barely got me at the line, and we finish in fourth place here from New Hampshire Motor Speedway. There you see the margin of victory on your screen. Uh, wow. <laughs> I mean, just looking at the finishing spot for us in stage one, we finished fourth. In stage two, we finished fourth. And we finished fourth in the race. We were fourth at every point of this race when something came to a close. So, uh, very, very uh, good race for us overall. I mean, we had consistent speed, just not enough to be able to compete with a guy like Chase Elliott and Christian Eckes on the long run when those tires got worn, which is a little bit unfortunate. But nonetheless, a good race for us for this Gordon Hendrick team. And then in the next one, we have the regular season finale. At Daytona International Speedway, very excited for that one. There is one goal for us, I will tell you guys right now, unless Alex Bowman crashes out of the race, we 100% are not going for the win in this race. We're trying to push Alex Bowman. Look at the points gap. So Haley Deegan, by the way, is locked into the top 30. I went and made sure she will make it in the, into the playoffs because of her win and be in the top 30 in points. So it's between Kyle Busch, Todd Gilliland, Chase Briscoe, and Alex Bowman. So Kyle Busch is 17 points to the good going into Daytona. Uh, that's not very easy to give up at a normal track, but at Daytona, you can give that up in a heartbeat. 21 points behind is Chase Briscoe, and 24 behind is a driver. We're going to try and push to victory lane in Daytona, and uh, that is Alex Bowman for our Gordon Hendrick Motorsports team. The goal, though, is to try and push Alex to as many stage points as possible as well, as every point matters going into Daytona. It's going to be a wild one. If you guys enjoyed, you know what to do. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time of your day to watch this episode. And of course, I want to say thank you to the Going Racing members on the channel of MJ, Joseph9001, Timothy Arline, Bubba Jr., Brett Durward, Dark Again Gar Gaming, AJ Vasseur, Russell Dixon, Kenneth Barnett, Dana9302, Speed Demon 341 as well as Illinois Diecast. I appreciate you guys' support so, so much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.